In today's video, we're going to set some groundwork for DNA replication by exploring why DNA has to be elongated from a five to three prime direction. So let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Mikey from Able Prep Academy, and you're joining us here today in our first lecture on DNA replication. And in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about what the five and the three primes actually mean on a DNA molecule and why the DNA molecule has to be elongated from a five to three prime direction. Now, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. We're gonna be releasing more content on DNA replication and molecular biology in preparation for your May exam. DNA is considered to be the blueprint of life, and that's because the digitization of data that is encoded by the four nucleotides within the length of the DNA molecule contains information that actually transpires into the proteins that influence the way that you develop and the way that you look, and in some cases, the way that you even behave. Therefore, the data that is contained within DNA is integral to the organism's life. But whenever we talk about data, directionality of how that data is encoded and decoded is very important. So for example, we take a word like dog with D-O-G in that sequence, it means a canine organism. But if we read it from right to left, then of course we have the word G-O-D, which is a completely different concept within our society. And thankfully, the encoding of information on the DNA molecule is actually done from a five to three prime direction as per evolutionary history. And as a result, we're able to decode information that we see in a nucleotide sequence into the the amino acid sequences that we learn about in the process of translation. But what's important about this though is that DNA is a double helix anti-parallel molecule, which means that we have a five to three prime direction DNA strand that is running on one end, and on the opposite strand, we're going to have a three to five prime direction in an anti-parallel sense. And that is absolutely important in DNA's ability to self-replicate as well as hold information. But it can be a little confusing what these fives and threes are supposed to represent. So let's take a look at what those things actually mean. When you take a look at a nucleotide, it's comprised of three components. You have a nitrogenous base, you have a five carbon sugar and you have a phosphate group. What's important to pay attention to here is that five carbon sugar. You see within this ribose or deoxyribose sugar in RNA and DNA, we have these carbons that are numbered from carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, and carbon five. And what you see in a single strand of DNA, not the double helix, but one side of that DNA molecule, you have the phosphate end that is connected to the fifth prime carbon on one end of that DNA molecule. And on the other end of that DNA molecule, you have the three carbon hydroxide group that extends from it. And this is what we mean when we talk about the directionality of DNA from a five to three prime. And commensurately on the opposite side of that DNA strand, you would have a direction that is running in anti-parallel. Now, during DNA replication, each of these molecules are used as templates in order to synthesize a new strand of DNA opposite, again, in anti-parallel to the original template strands. This is what we call the semi-conservative replication mechanism. But what we always say in biology is that DNA must be elongated from a five to three prime direction, and that is the way that the elongation of DNA has evolved. So the question then becomes, why did it evolve this way? And I think we have an answer to that. But in order to tackle this question, we have to think a little bit back to the ideas of entropy. Remember that as molecules get more and more and more complex, it means that we are actually decreasing the entropy of that molecule. This means that we're creating more complex materials from a simpler beginning. And this is typically associated with what we call an endergonic reaction, a reaction that requires energy to proceed. Now, in other biological processes, the energy for endergonic reactions are typically provided by adenosine triphosphate or guanosine triphosphate. Well, for the DNA replication process or the synthesis of the new strand of DNA, well, that ATP and GTP and CTP and TTP are those nucleoside triphosphates that are actually the building blocks of DNA, which means that the deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates that go into building the DNA molecules themselves supply the energy necessary to make this endergonic process happen without the input of external energy 
energy sources. So if we take a look at an illustration of how this 5 to 3 prime direction of DNA elongation occurs, you have a nucleoside triphosphate that comes in, two of the phosphates or the pyrophosphate is hydrolyzed, providing energy for the creation of the phosphodiester bond that forms the backbone of the DNA molecule, and the process can continue. Now here's one thing to remember though, because in many cases, DNA polymerase, while very, very accurate, can make mistakes. And when a mistake is made, that phosphodiester bond is cleaved, the nucleotide is then released, therefore allowing the correct nucleoside triphosphate to come in and repeat that reaction. Now let's take a look at what would happen if we were to go the other way. So if we were to imagine that DNA is elongating from a three to five prime direction, we have to start with the three phosphates on that deoxyribose molecule that is at the tip of the growing chain of DNA. Now the next nucleoside triphosphate would come in, but the energy necessary to make that new phosphodiester bond would be coming from the cleaving of the pyrophosphate from the existing deoxyribose sugar. So far, so good. We make that phosphodiester bond and everything seems to be okay. However, what if there was a mistake? Because if there is a mistake and we cleave that phosphodiester bond, then what's actually left behind is a deoxyribose sugar with only one phosphate. And because the energy to elongate the DNA chain comes in this scenario from the existing chain, not the nucleoside triphosphates that are coming in, once you make that mistake and you remove the mistaken nucleotide, then no longer is there energy available to elongate that chain. And this type of scenario would have never evolved in the course of our evolutionary history, leading to all of the DNA replication and even RNA synthesis having to go from a five to three prime direction. So while this was a short video, it's just the beginning, because once we have this idea established, then it really explains a lot of why the DNA replication process occurs the way it does with the leading strand and the lagging strand and the Okazaki fragments that we learn about in the next video. So hopefully you'll join us for that one. This has been Mikey with AVO Prep Academy. Click subscribe and like and click the bell icon if you want to see that video dropping very soon. We'll see you very shortly. Have a great day.